Hello and welcome to the We On Sports Broadband Edition with me, Digvijay Singh Deo. My guest today is one of India's most successful shooters. He's one of India's uh, first world champions in the sport of shooting. And he's also a recipient of India's highest sporting award, the Khel Ratna. I'm joined uh, by Manavjit Singh Sandhu. Manav, it's been, what, two decades of knowing you. And I must confess, this is perhaps the first time we've had to do this interview over broadband. Yeah, Digvijay, well, there's always new things to experience. And uh, <clears throat> broadband and others, great to connect with you using whatever way we can. How have you been, Manav? How's, uh, how things at home? Because uh, I've been to your place as well. You stay a rather outside of Delhi. It's a rather secluded place as well. So how are you all managing? Well, um, I can proudly say I've done my civic duty. I've uh, not violated the lockdown in any way. We've been uh, very disciplined and uh, we've been at home. And uh, luckily, I have a little bit of space uh, being on the outskirts. So I've utilized that to the maximum uh, capacity. But yes, it's been... It's been unique. You know, Manav, you're actually the second Indian sports person I've spoken to over the course of this series, where we've actually had to schedule the interview, taking into account the children's online classes. What does, this, what does that tell you about the adjustment we as parents have had to do? You know, it's, a, it's extremely strange, I think, Vijay. I mean, an online class is uh, something I think uh, we, I would never have imagined uh, having to attend one. And as parents, we are... Uh, asked to join in in some occasions. So not only have I seen it happening, I've also attended one at my stage of life. So it's it's interesting. But but uh, having said that, I, I do feel that it is it is providing some value and it should carry on as long as necessary. Mm. But Manav, uh, how have you all adjusted to all this? Perhaps as you said, it makes uh, it's it's actually worked out in your favor that your parents stay next door. That you guys have a common door through which you can access their place. So for your son, at least there is some company, you know? Yeah, Digvijay, you know, uh, it's come quite easy to me, actually. I was expecting when they were in the beginning, we were talking about a month, a month and a half. Uh, uh, we were expecting it to be tougher than it turned out to be. I've used this time constructively. I've tried to make, uh, uh, you know, the use of it in a way that adds value to us as a family and to me as an individual. And I feel I've been fairly successful in that. And uh, it's not been uh, as tough as it was uh, initially thought to be. One of the news from Italy is uh, that, you know, training is starting to begin. Uh, other parts of Europe as well, like Germany, life slowly limping back to normalcy, especially sporting activity is starting to be announced. We're not seeing that happen in India as of now. Is that a concern, especially for those who had booked tickets for the Olympics? Yeah, you know, it is a matter of concern. There is only so much that we can say that we can, uh, we'll draw benefit from him and we'll do these things. At the end of the day, it is a matter of concern that we, that a sportsman needs to go so long without a chance to practice. Considering how the situation is globally, Manu, with even now flights not uh, happening around most countries, they're bound to be travel restrictions, quarantine regulations. Do you foresee any sporting activity, especially in your sport, till the end of this year? No, none internationally. I'm, I've resigned myself to the thought that as far as competing with the rest of the world is concerned, that's not looking very, uh, likely this year. But having said that, uh, it is also uh, looking tough for me to envision a good domestic a competitive domestic uh, situation for the next couple of months. And uh, that is a cause of concern. And I'm sure sportsmen and sports administrators across the world are now grappling with this problem. How do we keep the edge going and how do we take advantage over the next country and doing this uh, course? You know, uh, Manav, Rafael Nadal said a very important thing the other day, just a couple of days back. He said that as far as he was uh, concerned, Mentally, he has written off the 2020 season. Do you think that right now the buzzword around the world is adapt, you know, reinvent yourself? Do you think there's a lot of, there's a lot of thinking, as you said, now to be done by uh, your parent body, the NRAI, 
as to how to keep the shooters in top peak and uh, peak, uh, you know, top peak condition because everyone knows you cannot sit at home and do do dry practice and um, and continue to be at your top level as a shooter. It's a sport of perfection. Yes, absolutely. The word is adaptation. There is no question that there's going to be a negative effect across the board on every sportsman. There is no way we can expect someone to uh, consider this to be helpful in any way. The challenge is to mitigate the negative effect. And um, this is a equally important, I think, responsibility shared by the sportsmen and the administrators. And these are the decisions and issues that are going to be discussed and managed by countries around the world. And it is those which uh, mitigate the negative impact as less as possible. Those are the ones that are going to jump into 2021 with a decided advantage. Now, <clears throat> as far as India is concerned, we have our own unique set of challenges and amongst them is a high population density. We have uh, issues of, uh, uh, you know, uh, where we will have to address the sportsmen independently from the general public. Because just to wait for everything to become normal before the sportsmen are allowed back in action may be uh, uh, problematic. Okay. Uh, Manav, uh, Manav, let's look at the Olympics because uh, you competed at four Olympics, you know, back to back. Uh, Athens, Beijing, London, Rio. How gutted were you not to uh, qualify this time? You've had a bit of uh, injury concerns, you know, illness and also all that happened. You've remarkably stayed uh, illness and injury free through your career. But right in the qualification phase for Tokyo, it sort of hit you with a vengeance. Uh, mentally, how do you adjust to not being there? Well, you know, uh, this is, a, uh, I think over the course of my career, Disappointments have become, uh, uh, you know, part of our life because the sports from the victories are very few and far between. So definitely handling disappointment and how to pick yourself up and carry on is part and parcel of my life. It's been for many years now. So to be honest, I would have expected the reaction to be worse, the feeling to be worse than it turned out to be. It was, uh, uh, it would have been far easier if I'd been able to compete everywhere and then lost out on uh, just but not being able to win it. Uh, but having to miss it because of an injury has la it added a little bit of a negative twist to it. But uh, I've, I've uh, resigned myself to that thought. And now I look forward to not uh, being, you know, not losing any motivation and carrying on at the same speed. You mentioned that it didn't hit you as much as you would have expected. How do you reassess your goals after a major disappointment like this? Did it ever occur to you that maybe, you know, just get frustrated? Uh, I let me let me walk away. Just question yourself. Well, you know, the question of walking away is never a knee-jerk reaction to a loss. That would be unfair to me as and my career. And I would never make a decision simply as a, uh, out of a sense of disappointment. Uh, I would definitely consider this situation at a time where I feel that I'm no longer able to compete at a level which is going to win me medals. There's no point competing simply for the sake of participation. So I am uh, pragmatic enough <clears throat> to realize when that time comes. And uh, we have a very interesting <clears throat> staggered international calendar, as you're well aware, where, where for two years following the Olympics, we have the Asian Games and the Commonwealth Games. So that staggering of events, you know, uh, softens the softens the disappointment. So to be very honest at the moment, I find myself uh, in the Indian team, as you're aware, I find myself able to compete. I find myself with the right amount of motivation to carry on. And I don't see myself uh, throwing in the towel yet. Okay, we don't want you to throw in the towel, Manav. That was never the idea of the question. But uh, has this enforced break sort of uh, given you new wind, new perspective? Well, you know, I've been thinking about this and uh, my personal view is, and of course it's uh, highly, <clears throat> you know, uh, individualized, but my personal view is that the experienced athlete, someone with many years under his belt, would be at a slight advantage coming out of this because uh, <clears throat> he, he is uh, the, one, of the, one of the main issues that we struggle with is motivation 
and the you know the ability to avoid being burnt out by years and years with the same dull dreary very rigorous routine uh, of practice and uh, a, a break like this is i think added to my has been to my advantage because uh, when i come back i'll have a renewed sense of hunger now on the flip side a younger athlete who is just about to take off or is in mid flight on his uh, is going to find that the this uh, lack of opportunity to be a hindrance in his ambition and he's going to be frustrated and perhaps unable to deal with uh, you know this uh, break so it is be, it is it is definitely something that i would not to get frustrated because <clears throat> you're in a hurry to to meet your goals you're in a hurry to to win all the medals and uh, an important year like this going by is going to leave a mark on them get look you know what if so uh, a break like this has been to my advantage I, i'm going to come back I'm more hungry but at the moment of course we are still directionless but once we have a direction then everybody will find uh, the hunger returning and the focus returning in fact you know manav i was speaking to abhinav bindra last month and he said exactly the same thing that the younger uh, athletes especially in indian shooting they have to be handheld through this entire process it's the experienced shooters who will be able to find a way how how important a role is it for seniors like you for experienced uh, coaches within the system to guide these youngsters through this process because they've had a very small career in world shooting they've come up found instant success they've never had a pause like this and then they have to compete in an olympic games you know it's not going to be easy i'm i'm to be very f- uh, frank i'm quite concerned with this predominantly because we have a very young lot of shooters and how they react to this is still an unknown uh, having said that of course we must uh, uh, we must also realize that they are extremely talented they are extremely driven and i'm sure in their mind they are on full speed all throughout the last couple of months uh, but the federation has the uh, has a huge responsibility to keep in touch with them and to understand what they're feeling because a lot of this is psychological obviously and uh, then as senior players we can lead by example that is always what we have tried to do because you know the theory doesn't really settle into someone's mind as much as example does and i have over the course of the last few years it consistently displayed displayed this uh, as an example when i take a month or two off completely from shooting the leaner months i just give up and i don't look at my gun and i've i've noticed that a lot of the youngsters have asked me specifically about how i feel after a break like that so perhaps in their mind they're also thinking hey, look if manav could do it surely uh, we can too so these are the small small ways that we contribute but necessarily it's a very individualistic process and must be helped along by the federation okay let's let's also expand on this one because in 2006 you won the world championship uh in trap and it was a seminal moment for indian sport because trap is one of the blue ribbon events in uh, in in your sport of shooting and abhinav bindra also won the gold at that point of time so for two indian shooters and then a junior world champion in navnath fatrade it was a great moment for indian sport then you've had another change now coming which is the last 3 or 4 years we were together at the asian games and we saw this explosion of talent what do you make of these young kids coming through fresh completely you know without any baggage and they don't have a care in the world even if they're up against the biggest names in world shooting how do you see this uh, uh, how do you see the way shooting has evolved in the last what 10 15 years yeah it's been a huge uh, change and i would not like to simply say that the change is because they're young the fact remains i can very well remember my own uh, feelings and my own emotions when i was their age entering into, into the sport and uh, to be very honest it's not the same it's not only that they uh, that they're young that is the difference but the youth of today has a uh, has a paradigm with different shifted view of what it is to compete we had a uh, i remember when we were introduced into the sport of the youngsters we were far more i would not like to use the, res- the word respect but we were overawed by our seniors <clears throat> and that and that respect and overall sort of i am sure crept into our uh, psyche when we were going head on head and it took a few years to come over that hurdle before we could think that we could beat them but the youngsters of today don't have that baggage Uh, while they do respect the uh, senior shooters and sportsmen i'm sure 
but they don't let that respect come in the way of their feelings of whether they can beat them. And this is a huge advantage that the youth of today has, and it's been amply dis uh, displayed by our young lot of youngsters. They've uh, won medals which were previously thought unwinnable at their age. So it's a great, uh, it's a very positive sign, and I'm, this is something that I think uh, ha is one of the biggest achievements that we've had, is that we are psychologically uh, able to win and to think of winning earlier. So this is a huge, huge difference. But Manav, uh, in hindsight, do you now think that maybe the approach back then, and it's a different era of shooting, uh, which all of you guys uh, sort of uh, went through, that perhaps you all were too focused, too much involved in the process of shooting, and not perhaps slightly relaxed? That's because, you know, at the Asian Games in, in Palembang, and I was there with you, I saw these young kids the night before competition actually on their playstations. I would never imagine a Manavjit Sandhu anywhere apart from his room, hunkered down, thinking of quiet one night before competition. Yeah, you know, well, Dikute, there's, um, there's no doubt that our strategy or our approach was different from theirs. Now, it remains to be seen in the long run, which is perhaps better. But once again, I do say that this is again individualistic. There were, there were people at my time who were, uh, I would not like to word, use the word casual, but perhaps more open to uh, switching off from their sport. Uh, and there was amongst the few of us who kept, who decided to, you know, keep that, you know, stay in the zone 24 hours. So that, whether it helps them individually is an open question. I think it's difficult to say which is better, which is worse. And uh, that, that was something that people will judge, coaches will judge further down the road. But there are advantages and disadvantages to, to both. Uh, and at the moment, definitely the shift is towards being a little bit more casual, a little bit more open in your thought process, which is uh, a welcome. This is always good. Progress is always welcome. Okay. But Manav, uh, you know, you saw, I mentioned Abhinav Bindra. You both won world championships there in 2006, the gold medal. Abhinav went on and won the Olympic medal as well. Uh, the gold in, in Beijing two years later. Why is it a trap? your sport, despite having a greater legacy in Indian shooting from the times of uh, the late Karni Singh to uh, your uncle Randhir Singh, uh, down to perhaps since 96, we've actually been to every Olympics, uh, had a trap shooter. Why has Indian shooting not been able to produce another shooter of your caliber who's gone on and dominated the world? You know, this is a thought that I've thought of a lot of times, and it's my personal view that Trap shooting is a very, is sort of, is an individualized sport where uh, individual talent and capability is in disproportionate importance to a system or a, 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 a regime of training. And we are, um, I think we had a lull of talent for a while where, uh, you know, people were, we were depending on simply the system taking over and developing what may have been, uh, you know, uh, a great talent, but not not truly great talent into world beaters. But we've now come to the conclusion that not only do we need a great system, we need truly talented people who can be polished by that system. And this has never been more evident than in a sport like trap, where it's so individualized and there's a certain flair and there's a certain uh, technical aspect which can, uh, you know, which can, which can only work if a, a great system meets a great talent. One of, but you know, for for all of this uh, success that you had in your career, how disappointed are you or, or do you have a regret at not winning that Olympic medal? Because I've seen how much you've put into it. I've seen how much effort you've put into it. The fact that you've left your family, gone and trained six, seven months. I've even heard of you actually staying in, in Italy and other parts of the world when it was snowing, just like we have isolation right now. It was complete isolation. It, it's taken a lot out of you. So in, in hindsight, why is it so damn difficult to win that Olympic medal? You know, well, the Olympic level, uh, the, I mean, the medal is, uh, is elusive for everyone around the world. It is uh, simply by the nature of coming out only once every four years. I've often said that if you repeat the Olympic event 10 times over on the same day, you get 10 different winners. Such is the nature, such is the, the, the closeness of all competitors. So it's a bit of a... You know, uh, it's a bit of a roulette with who comes out on top of where, where. 
But I have also uh, firmly believed that that's not the only measure of success sportsmen must endeavor for. We have opportunities to win at every stage and we have opportunities to, uh, to compete at every stage, at every level, at varied levels. And one uh, does, uh, at, the, at the end of the career, notice that if you were good enough and you worked hard enough, somewhere or the other, you would be able to win for India. And I think that that feeling is shared by all people. Is not That is not only just the one medal that we are striving for, but we are striving to win for India at various, various events. Yes, and you won the full stack, haven't you, across all other major competitions. Uh, just on the Olympics, Manav, there is a lot of uncertainty right now. Yes, they've been pushed back by a year to July of next year. But there's still a lot of conflicting signals coming out of Japan as to whether the Olympics will actually be held depending uh, on the situation of the vaccine, if a vaccine is found for this coronavirus pandemic. Uh, considering the uncertainty, considering the fact that currently in this Indian team which qualified for the Olympics, you've just four shooters, Rajput, Apurvi Chandela, uh, Rahi Sarnobat and Meraj Khan, everybody else is a first-timer. How do you sort of deal with this anxiety that you you know at one stage that you've got to give it your best that you've got to continue to keep those levels up the motivation levels up and everything find ways to train even when everything is shut down right now you may not be able to compete internationally but you still don't know if the olympics happen is that going to be a really tough test mentally to stay alert and stay focused for the next 12 months yes absolutely it's going to be a huge challenge there is no doubt about it I would advise them to keep a smaller view. Let the, they should avoid thinking of the Olympics for a while and, and bring their view in a little closer and maybe may set, set themselves smaller, more, more uh, targets, more in the foreseeable future and then regain that momentum. Because it, if you expect to stay at full speed from now to a year and a half later, it's uh, possibly a wrong step. Okay, uh, Manav, your sport... Uh... How does world shooting adapt? Is uh, seeing a lot of these online competitions, while they aren't great, but is that the way forward, especially in rifle and pistol? If you don't have competition, you could look at a situation where you head into the Olympic Games and get, as you said, a completely skewed results because when you don't have competition, everyone's basically going in blind. So how does your sport, how does world shooting adapt? To the situation of no traveling and and especially all elite shooters you have your world cup so you have to travel across the world be it uh sydney from to mexico it's all over the world yes absolutely there is like you said uh, world shooting has to adapt it's uh, uh, there is no question about the fact that uh, our sport is slightly tougher to adapt to online uh, competitions but it is a necessary uh, step uh, some amongst amongst shooting, of course, some is easier to do, like uh, in a controlled environment, easier. Events like mine are significantly tougher because of this vast amount of uh, infrastructural issues. But yes, it is something that we should look at to keep uh, the clock ticking and keep the fuel flowing, because simply shutting down is a is is a worse opportunity, uh, worst option. So definitely, the federation must consider setting up of online tournaments, whether domestic or international, and facilitate those where um, shooters have something to look forward to and something to keep their focus with. Okay, uh, Manav, before, uh, before I wrap this up, uh, Manav, uh, what do you think are the lessons from this entire period? We would have never imagined being locked up indoors, living in, in, in sort of self-isolation, and the enemy is something we can't even see. I mean... We've got to readjust our priorities in life, don't you think so? Once life slowly gets back to normal. Oh yes, as sportsmen, we have uh, we let our sports and our goals overpower all relative thought, and suddenly that tournament becomes more important than life itself. So definitely, moments like this let you um, reset that priority, and you realize that you know at the end of the day there is a life and there is a world beyond simply that the next tournament. And that is good perspective. And I have also learned how to utilize your time. I think the sportsman time is, of a, is a very limited uh, and precious commodity because there's only so many years that you can compete. And how to draw the maximum out of that is another life skill, sports skill that I think this will teach because there are people who have managed to 
extract value out of every moment of this lockdown and there, there are others who haven't. So these are skills and these are small things that we have gained from this undoubtedly. And we hope to you know, utilize that uh, set of skills and thoughts when we get back to them. Yes, uh, you know, I actually remember once, I don't know if you do remember Manav, but uh, way back, maybe ahead of the London Olympics, I once came to your house for an interview at two at night because you had landed at exactly that point of time from somewhere abroad. And you did the, we did the interview at two at night. And then next morning, within a couple of hours, you actually drove off to Amritsar and then came back and went back to Italy. So you were, I think, in India for just about 24, 25 hours. And perhaps now for your family to see you at home with this beard and all over the last so many days must have been so welcome. But uh, thank you, Manav. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for your perspective. It's always uh, nice to talk to the so-called senior generation in Indian sport because when you talk to the youngsters, you get a lot of bravado, you get a lot of uh, aggression. But when you talk to old friends like you, you get a lot of perspective. I think perspective is something which is required today. Uh, as you said, it's the wise old heads which can perhaps navigate this crisis a bit more. And uh, clearly, Manav, your sport, uh, age isn't a factor, especially in traps. So now that you found some new perspective, got this new break, hit uh, the Rangers uh, with a vengeance when all this is over. Thank you, Digvijay. Great to see you as always.